Hello, welcome to this Mini CNC Rotor 3018 belt. Basically the main structure is 20 by 20 millimeter extruded aluminium of fairly high quality. The corner brackets of which I'm putting together here are die cast aluminium and they're put together with Allen head uh, screws and T-head nuts, which uh, I actually find the easiest way to apply them is to put them on the end of the Allen wrench and slip them through the slot and as you turn the wrench they sort of lock uh, in, the, um, in the slot in the aluminium as I'm showing you here and they do up and I never had one that failed. They're just a, a little bit small, I think, for my fingers, but uh, if you uh, persevere, they're, they're actually fine. Um, it's important at this stage, because this is the main chassis, to you know get everything exactly square as you can. Because that's going to determine the outcome of the, the whole build. So here I am checking to see whether it is indeed square. So I check every corner as you build it. So then you don't, uh, if you have a problem further along the build, you know, you don't have to go around checking every corner to find out, well, where is the problem? The manual that they send, uh, it's got lovely little drawings and um, Lots of nice measurements, you know, and they're all correct, but there is no explanation of how to build this whatsoever. Uh, so you've, <laughs> it's probably a good idea that I've made this video. Um, so you can follow along if you wish. So this is the, the, the base of the whole unit, and uh, they do indicate on the drawings, how to put the corner brackets, uh, you know, in what formation to put them in. Oh yes, subscribe to my channel, that's always a help. And it's a good idea to have a nice, flat, clean surface. Okay, so I've assembled the two frames. Okay, so the base and so the gantry, which would fit on here. Um, now, although there's very good um, CAD drawings here and measurements, there's very little in the way of explanation of how to put this together. Now, they indicate here in drawings only that you assemble the gantry on here. But that, I think, or should I say, I think there's an easier way to put this together. And that is, we'll put, set the gantry aside, and we'll continue working on the, on the base. And we'll completely build the base and put the table on first, and get it all nice and square. And then we will assemble the gantry separately. Then when I finish the gantry, I'll put the gantry onto the base. I think that's a far better way of doing it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm putting the support brackets here for the rails. Now they do give a measurement on the drawings. So I've just put a pen mark there to the center of the rails or where they should roughly be and the end of the bracket. So I'm indicating here that uh, there is a right way up and a wrong way up <laughs> to put the <laughs> the table. The three in the middle there are slightly larger and um, 
Well, they are. Oh. So I put all the tea nuts in, and uh, you know they they will only really go up one way, I think, and then spread them out to to uh, accommodate where the bearings uh, and the main screw bearing block goes in the middle. This is the easiest way I can think of to put this together uh, and that is I assemble all the bearing blocks upside down as it were. Um, in other words the, the, the frame itself is upside down and it's just a means of being able to line everything up and uh, put it in there all nice and square and you'll see what I mean uh, in a few, few minutes so everything's put in there loosely and there is there's only one way to put these around too just notice there I'm turning it around Yeah, you'll notice that the the whole securing hole is offset on those bearing blocks so we just slide it slide the rail through and then make sure it's square to the frame that is the bed is square to the frame and the bearing blocks are in the appropriate in the appropriate place and just nip them at this stage one end only make sure that the tables all lined up square and it's it's important to get the table square with the end rail that it's just resting against because if you get this first rail square as I was just tightening it down the other one will just fall into place And it always pays too to double check uh, your measurements. <laughs> so then you just slide the rails back out. And turn it up. And that was a little bit too loose. And of course it fell out when I, <laughs> when I turned it around. So you're just going to make sure that the the center bearing block there, uh, the screw thread bearing block, is actually pointed in the right direction. Make sure everything is running freely and then you can lock it all up nice and tight. So the little NEMA 17s just have a, a metal plate and I think at the beginning I said uh, I wasn't quite sure what the little tiny screws were for. Well this is what they were for. The little uh, M3s that hold hold the stepper motor to its plate. Don't over tighten these because you can actually uh, strip the head out. So what I do then is just put a 
mark in the center line and I have a mark on the center line then on the chassis and as I'm indicating there that's where the motor goes so I think this is self-explanatory how you put the backlash um, bearing screw together it's in two halves one is actually inside the uh, the bearing block there and the other one is screwed onto the shaft and there's a spring in between them so you just screw it onto the end of the the shaft or the, the screw thread and then push it into the a uh, mate up with the other half uh, against the tension of the spring and just screw it one into the other and then screw it on through and I'm um, just putting the other or the far end bearing block on that's got a little bearing inside it and uh, if you notice there and get my hand out of the way that there's a um, little pen mark where I the, the center was so I knew exactly where to put it I'm just indicating the center of the threads on that center mark and just pop the coupling on and there again don't tighten these up too much because you can actually you strip them out just very firm now don't be too heavy handed with it it's only a, a little CNC rotor after all so you just push the oh, first of all you line the motor up and put it in there I it's it's sort of firm but it's not tight yet so I get the thread in there and then tighten the two grub screws up on the end of that uh, drive thread and what I miss out here uh, I actually did do it was tighten the motor up so now we're putting the gantry part together now what I'm indicating here is that you you see the black tightening screw there on the clamp that needs to be facing up and I'm also indicating there that the end of this riser then needs to be at the end of the the, the gantry um, chassis part because everything relies on on that now with the lower one it you need that um, clamping bracket screw facing down because otherwise it's difficult to get to and just put this second one in very lightly you don't have to tighten the second one up at all tighten the top one the top two rather and then slot this in put it through the top of the z-axis assembly put it in and lock it up lock it up tight now the reason you do that is because then the lower one is adjusted and you can adjust it exactly parallel with the top one by using the Z axis, or not Z axis, but the, the Z uh, assembly, then as a gauge block, as I'm doing here. So you, you slide it all the way at one end, tighten it up, and slide it all down the other end, and then tighten the lower bracket up. So then you know it's absolutely parallel. And uh, tighten the clamps up. You can see now it's easier to get to those clamps. And then see you can push it with your little finger so you know it's exactly parallel. Now this is what I was saying about the anti backlash. You put one inside the other, compress the spring, and then wind the one into the other. It's the there's a, a corresponding uh, brass threaded part that's already in the uh, Z assembly so you're screwing one into the other and the, the spring in between them 
uh, holds them both apart and that's what uh, allows the anti-backlash uh, mechanism to work you know it sort of holds the thread up tight as it were and it's just the same process as what we did with the y-axis okay so what I'm actually what I've done there was I tightened up the little blue uh, connector and I've now wound it all the way up as far as I can to the motor so I know the motor shaft is directly in line with that shaft and now very quickly wind it all the way back the other way thank heavens for speeded up photography and then we put the other support in the other end and really that's um, the, the gantry built apart from the very substantial uh, mounting feet now they, they've, they've used six of those uh, corner brackets to mount onto the base very very secure and you know you can't go wrong with these it will only go into one place so you don't have to worry too much about um, you know squareness to the base because it will only go in one spot uh, you know, there's not a, even half a millimeter of, you know, sort of adjustment in any direction. Where it fits, it fits, as it were. So anyway, tighten it up, and then you put the bracing in. So it's, it's all really self-explanatory, really. I think there's no. It's not a, a difficult build at all. So just pop the motor in there. I just used a screwdriver actually just to ease that open and just slot it in. And um, put the electronics on the back it's all very nicely encased in a, in a plastic case too and it has its own cooling fan uh, what I'm indicating there actually there's a red spot on the rear housing of the motor that shows you where the positive goes if you connect it up the wrong way it just means the motor is going to spin backwards and you're not going to cut a lot like that so what I was just doing there too was just, uh, um, I don't know what you call it, platin it? <laughs> Make it look a little tidier anyway. Uh, I will actually get some um, Spiroflex to um, finish up these cables uh, neatly. I didn't have any at the time of building. Uh, I only built this yesterday and uh, I, I didn't have any. I thought I had some but I didn't have any. So it's something I'm going to have to get next week. So that's pretty well the end of the build, and uh, it, everything went, you know, to the numbers. It was a very easy build, really. Um, so thank you for joining me. Please pop in for the next uh, instalment where we actually test this CNC rotor part of it to see well how it performs and what we can do to make it better so bye for now